Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com and RockAuto.com. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, Brian Robinson. Hello and welcome again to MotorWeek podcast. This is number 224. Joining me is our uh, Over the Edge producer, and reporter and podcast producer, everything, Greg Carlos. It is an honor to be here. And uh, FYI reporter Stephanie Hart dealing with some sickness, so she may sound a little different than usual. Yeah, thank you. Fighting a cold or flu, whatever it is. And road test producer, literally just getting back from the track, testing some vehicles, Kyle Scanlon. Hey, everybody. So this uh, week we're going to have a usual look at some road test cars, as well as the lightning round and, of course, the viewer question, and perhaps even a rant or a rave. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely? <laughs> definitely okay. a rant. All right. So, well, no suspense. No suspense. There definitely will be a rant. Uh, moving on to the vehicles we've tested uh, recently. Uh, Stephanie has recently driven the Hyundai Venue. And can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, I was in Miami to drive the 2020 Hyundai Venue. Um, I drove it from Miami to Key West, which was an amazing experience, a really fun journey. I thought the car handled great. It's a subcompact crossover, a small utility vehicle um, made for urban environments, easy to park in the city, easy to maneuver in the city. And then we, when we got out on the highway, it was a pretty comfortable drive. I thought the seats were comfortable. Um, I thought it was pretty spacious inside. Um, it's a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine, 121 horsepower. I thought I would really notice that it would be underpowered, but I didn't really notice. It did everything I needed it to do. It was comfortable, got me, you know, to Key West. Um, so it really wasn't a bad car. It's being marketed towards young millennials uh, or first time car buyers, um, trying to take. Um, buyers away from the used car market and put them in this because this has tons of safety, tons of tech, which is really great. Um, emergency braking, lane keep assist, blind spot collision warning, pretty much everything. Apple mm -hmm. CarPlay, Android Auto, um, and it's just over 17000 so it's a really good value. Um, I thought it was a fun car to drive. Also, I really liked how it looked. You know, a lot of the automakers are doing these two-tone cars now, and for me, I love that look. With I think the white it's roof, great. You mean? Yeah. yeah, the white roof. They're Mexican. calling <laughs> they're calling it denim, so that's okay. the premium denim trim. <laughs> that's funny. Definitely for the millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Does it have a bearded edition as well? And flannel. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, but it looks great. It's it's a really hot hot color in that upper trim level so um yeah interior is really nice too and it's the front wheel drive only that's correct you can't yeah uh front wheel drive only um but they did make something called a uh, uh, three mode traction control system so you can turn the button and it can go into uh normal sport or snow mode All right so couldn't really test out the snow mode given I was in Miami and Key West, but um, uh, Hyundai did a little bit demo to show how it would work. They set up a demo and it seemed to work pretty well. So it would take the car from like a, a stop in the snow to to um, to going forward over icy patches. Right. So which they when they demoed it, it seemed like it worked pretty well. Size wise, smaller than the Kona, right? It's like. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, 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 smaller than the Kona. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And this IVT, we were just talking off air. So yes. the, apparently the I stands for intelligent. Yes. Uh, but it's still a CVT, but it's smarter than other CVTs, as uh, Brian Robinson would have uh, <laughs> said off air. Um, <clears throat> also, though, it has a six-speed manual. Did I read that right, or mm -hmm. am I just yeah. making stuff up? Mm -hmm. We didn't get to drive that, but yeah, yeah it's available. Probably wouldn't get much use out of it going yeah. from Miami to Key West because yeah. I'm sure it's just, I've never driven it, but isn't that just like a straight, not like no elevation change? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, I mean, essentially, it does look cool. I'll agree. I haven't driven it, but I've seen pictures. It does look cool, but it's essentially an accent wagon. Mm -hmm. Um so, but you can't sell that in America. You can't sell wagons in America. Even if you put a white roof, even if you put a white roof on it, I mean, I mean, I would, I would consider it. But yeah, yeah there's, you're probably not going to get many people to buy it. But yeah, it's 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 definitely hitting in that category. They know who they're going at with mm -hmm. these millennials who live in the city and. Mm -hmm. uh, the front wheel drive thing for the southern states isn't obviously a huge deal, but 
I just feel like having that all-wheel drive option and everywhere above like North Carolina mm -hmm. is I mean a lot of people get hung up on it and as much as we want to tell people that if you just get winter tires and front wheel drive you're fine a lot of people just like the comfort of that all wheel drive so yeah. kind of a little curious why they didn't go that route you're a big fan of the Kia Soul I know I am um, a big soul man. similarly priced which would you uh which would you be more interested in well that's obvious it's the soul uh, I just, we, we just said it. <laughs> yeah all right well then we'll just move right on then <laughs> Uh, speaking of Kia, we'll move on to the Seltos. Am I saying that right? Yes, it's the All right. Seltos. Uh, another small uh, utility. Mm -hmm. So I uh, just went down to San Antonio, Texas to drive the Seltos around. Uh, Kia put on a great event for us, and, uh, it's, and they gave us a great car, to be honest. It's, the design features on it, based on the Telluride in a lot of ways, and after the Telluride's huge success, uh, a lot of eyes have been on Kia to see what they're going to do next when it comes to their utility vehicles. This one, the Seltos, fits right in between the Soul, which is Greg's love of his <laughs> life, I guess, and uh, and the Sportage. And it's uh, it's kind of a perfect size. It works it works well in the city. You know, San Antonio has some pretty narrow streets and stuff like that. Didn't do a ton of city driving, but I was in, uh, I was in the SX model. So that has the 1.6 liter turbo I4 with the seven speed dual clutch transmission as opposed to most others, which come with the two liter I4 with the IVT. Mm -hmm. uh, intelligent. Intelligent, mm -hmm. very intelligent. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get behind the wheel on one of those, so I can't tell you how it handles, how it works, but I can tell you with the 1.6 liter turbo, it's a peppy little bug and it'll move around quickly. I you know definitely had to do some overtaking and uh, you know, put the pedal to the floor a few times to see what it had to offer, especially after the last time I was on the podcast talking about the CX-30 and how wildly underpowered mm. that car is. They put just enough into this uh, with the 175 horses with the 1.6 turbo. Uh, starts at just under 22 grand, goes all the way up to around 26, I believe, for the SX model. And I, it's geared, again, at those millennials. Um, younger car buyers, kind of, you know, first on the market. It's comfortable, has a lot of tech options, um, and that's where you kind of go in between the under 22K to upwards of 27 is all the little options, all the extra bells and whistles you want. They took us out to a ranch where we got to do some very light off-roading, but it was there was still some mud, still some elevation changes, and the car did just fine. Uh, you know, no real tire spin, never felt like it couldn't handle what was being thrown at it. Granted, it wasn't that much, but it's definitely a vehicle that if you live in the city, you can feel pretty comfortable if you want to go on an adventure to go camping with a few people or take it up to a ski mountain or something like that. I would definitely trust it in the in the elements. So all-wheel drive is available on this one? It, uh, most models have yeah. the all-wheel drive. I think that I know for sure the the S model with the 2.0 comes in front wheel drive, and if I'm not mistaken, that's actually the only one that you oh, can really? get with front wheel drive. Oh, so okay. it's the other 80 85 percent of all the options come with all wheel drive. Yeah, well, Kia definitely needed this. Well, I wouldn't say need; it's a strong word, but they didn't have anything below the Sportage with all wheel drive. Mm -hmm. They had the Soul, which we've uh, talked about, and they had the Nero, which I like a lot. We all liked. But uh, So this is an all-wheel drive option mm -hmm. uh, now underneath of the Sportage, similar to the Hyundai Kona. I'm imagining they're yeah. pretty much the same uh, platform. But it looks great. I will say that. They really did a good job on the on the style of it. And uh, you know, the little cues that came from the Telluride, and you can tell a little, a little bit of the inspiration came from the Soul as well. So it's almost... Almost a love child of those two bodies that they have going like on. Like Kia's greatest hits? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Does yeah. the name uh, Seltos have any like relevance to anything that I should know? It was never explained to me, okay. so I don't know. It probably is something I should know. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Any comments for? for? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't drive it. No, well, I you're mean, the tall guy on yeah, this yeah. Well, uh, it seems like they're kind of sticking with that same theme between Hyundai and Kia brand where, you know, Hyundai is probably a little bit more upscale at this point, maybe the more mature buyer and Kia is still aiming at the more urban or not urban, but more like outdoorsy kind of young, youthful look. Mm -hmm. And it, 
I mean, just looking at the two, I think that's it's obviously the case. Yeah, uh, I but can definitely see it in a commercial where like a bunch of people get out and start going rock climbing. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, it should come with a pair of hiking boots when they're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I saw it on the floor at LA right when it came out, and uh, yeah, it, it looks good. The, it has that. Uh, is it the same greenish metallic color as the Telluride? Or no, the, um, the ones we were driving or the ones they had for us was. Uh, a, a yellow, a kind of a bright yellow. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to describe that it. That might be the one I'm thinking of. I could be just explaining it wrong. It's just yeah. like a... Yeah, I saw that It's one. more of a yellow color, definitely. Okay. But it's um, it's in your face. And you could definitely see when they were uh, on our drive when six or seven of us would link up all in these bright yellow Kias driving down the highway in Texas. Uh, you know, guys in big trucks were definitely giving us What's the eye. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was uh, a sight to but see. But no white roofs or anything? Um, Traditional colored roofs only. I believe the roof was black, actually. So black. I think it was. Oh, really? Toned. I I could be mistaken, no. um, but I believe it was a little two toned. I don't believe the roof was all it was the same color really? as the body. Right. Yeah. If only there were a way to figure this out. Yeah. yeah. As I type it, it, we only had small device. computers that we keep in our pockets. If you're listening, um, you know, this is happening. Talk in real amongst time. yourself. We're in real time <laughs> looking at pictures. It is. Yeah. It is the two tone, the two tone yep. roof with the, well the black A pillar and C pillar. Mm -hmm. Everybody, whole, yeah, you're right yeah. though, Robinson. Everybody seems to be going that way. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's because like Camry has that option, and mm -hmm. obviously, uh, does the Soul have that option too? I don't know. Maybe the EV, the oh, yeah. Soul EV, when the, the original Soul mm -hmm. EV came out, I remember that was one of the first with that blue and white. But uh, maybe and, uh, I'm a millennial, but apparently that's <laughs> what we want. So, okay. <laughs> I feel like we're talking about the Soul more than anything else. So uh, yeah. we should probably move on. Uh, now, for those of you that are always complaining that we talk too much about Korean cars, uh, we're going to go and talk about a Porsche, which we also talk too much about, apparently. Speaking so. of soul, right? <laughs> That's what you should have done. Uh, well, you know I'm not good at these whole transition things. So, uh, moving on. <laughs> so, I was actually recently in Portugal driving a pair, uh, actually a trio, of new Macan GTS models. And uh, Macan GTS... These and the 718 uh, family GTS both in Cayman and Boxster form. Uh, I'll start with the Macan. Everyone knows the GTS formula is kind of taking a bunch of options that are already available in the Porsche catalog and adding them to an S, and voila, you got a GTS. That's pretty much what the Macan GTS is. Uh, there's a couple unique bits about it, the wheels you can't uh, get, and it's got a slightly different suspension, but basically it's a Macan S with a bunch of options on it and 15 more horsepower uh taking it to uh, 375 good overall package it doesn't have uh a different feel than our long-term s we have a long-term macan s that we all enjoy driving it has the same basic feel but then if you go pushing it you know there's a little more there did you actually feel 15 extra horsepower i mean not individually but does it just feel happier I, not really, really, say because everything is everything from the suspension and everything else is increased incrementally, so it doesn't really feel any faster until you you know really get on it. So it's just a yeah. paper number, really. That's uh, what you're saying. Well, I mean, I'm just saying I'm not good enough to notice 15 horsepower. Oh, I don't you believe probably, that. <laughs> you probably would be. I can feel like anything 20 and above. I think. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah, put one that's of those a total tornado. lie. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to be cool. <laughs> if you put one of those tornado air cleaners on, you can immediately <laughs> feel the boost. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, anybody have any questions on the GTS? No. Spy, did you say the yeah. spider design wheels? Oh, yeah. Yes. Is that uh, what do we have on our? Because right now we have the same wheels we had before, or did they swap? Because we put winter. T we didn't put winter tires. Right. Porsche put winter tires on our long term Macan. Same. I wheels. think they kept the wheels. Yeah, right? Same wheels. They swapped the tires. Yeah, but they're not. Are they spider design wheels? No, they're not. The spider actually are the same design that's on the seven eighteen spider. Mm. That's why they're the seven eighteen spider wheels. But look at that. Uh, that's a good transition over to the 718 side of the GTS story. Uh, this one's a little bit different uh, compared to the Macan. Uh, as you may or may not know, there's a Cayman GTS, I'm sorry, GT4, uh, which is the high-performance Cayman. There's also a 718 Spider, uh, which is a convertible version of the GT4. Uh, these cars are just below those in the lineup, so... Um, I'm not sure I can explain it uh, better than that, but basically a Cayman S, um, then you would have 
the GTS 4.0 and the in, GT4. The Cayman S that has the 4-liter turbo, then if we're going in direct order, then it would be Cayman GTS with a 4-liter naturally aspirated. Correct. And then you move up from there to the Cayman GT4. GT4. Right. Correct. Which, yeah. This doesn't get confusing at all. Yeah. Well, it's a GT4 <laughs> slightly friendlier for the street basically is what it is because that four liter naturally aspirated engine is the best part of just about any porsche you uh i've driven it's not the same four liters in the gt3 but uh it's a version of that engine and uh it sounds incredible um revs to like eight thousand rpm that yeah that i mean that kind of got lost with the current 718 not that it's a bad car but when you get into one that does have a four liter or even just, you know, any other naturally aspirated, it just, it brings that whole Porsche experience to, to a head. It's yeah. really cool. So, yeah, I don't think of it so much as like a Boxster or a Cayman S, more of like a slightly detuned, detuned version of the 718 Spider or GT4. And if you're into Porsches, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Everyone else is probably like, huh, what is, <laughs> what is he talking about? Uh, any any questions about that one? Any, yeah. Is it manual only? Yes, six-speed manual only, no PDK. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, and we drove the uh, the Cayman on the Estoril track there in Portugal, uh, which was amazing. It was a really cool track. Um, good event all together. Moving on. Speaking of fun cars, uh, why do you give me such long lightning rounds? Because I like listening to you right. read. I actually have a recorded track of you reading, and I <laughs> go to sleep to it at night. <laughs> I hear it puts a lot of people to sleep. Uh, so, uh, Here we go. Toyota used Daytona as a platform to announce updates to the Supra for the 2021 model year. First, a new four-cylinder option, a two-liter turbo with 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, and 200 fewer pounds. Then it up the output of the current 3-liter i6 turbo from 335 to 382 and 368 pound-feet of torque, essentially the same as the Z4 BMW, which the Supra shares a chassis with. Uh, what do you make of these options? Who wants to go first? I'll go. All right. I think the reading the output of the 2-liter turbo uh, and seeing that it's going to be a little lighter, I think that's going to be a really sweet car. I think uh, the lighter front end, and it's still putting out decent horsepower, 255, and it's a really well-balanced chassis. I think that's going to be a really fun car to drive. I'm curious what people who bought the first, was it the A90 Supra, mm -hmm. are going to think, because they have the 335, and then a year later, there's the output of 382, which, like we said, is what the Z4 was originally, mm -hmm. and now there's speculation, like, did, was there some sort of like internal deal between BMW and Toyota? You think they had to keep the Supra a little less powerful for the first yeah, year? I think pretty much everyone said that from the get go when the Supra came out. Yeah, but everybody—I shouldn't say everybody—but there was people dynoing these cars and saying that there was a lot more horsepower to the wheels than the 335 uh -huh. that Toyota was reporting. So maybe it's really not that maybe big of a deal anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, the right numbers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it could be and now they're just saying, "All right, it, it, you know, here it's officially on paper at 382." Hmm. Kyle. All right, um I definitely have to agree with Greg. I'm excited for the 2 liter turbo um coming from, you know, the cars I grew up with and stuff and you know, being at a, a younger age where, you know, things can really become a big part of your life was a lot of the Fast and Furious days where, oh, yeah. you know, two liter turbos and 1.8 liter turbos were the thing and everybody wanted one and a lot of people had them. And in my young delinquent, you know, street racing days and stuff like that, I had a 2.0, uh, didn't throw a turbo on it, but it was still a blast to drive. And uh, yeah, with the 200 fewer pounds, with how well balanced that chassis is, I think that thing is going to be a lot of fun to just grip and rip with. And it'll probably, I, I would like to see us get one of the 2.0s at uh, Roebling again next year just to see what it would be like around that track when we had, you know, the, the 335 I-6. So. Stephanie? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great. Really not much else to say. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting because we did, as Kyle mentioned, we did have a uh, Supra down at Roebling uh, last month. And everyone said it was a blast to drive, but a lot of people said it could use some more power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, voila, here we go, and there's more power. So... I think it's exactly what it needed and may have even had it all along. I don't know. But, I mean, it's a it's an amazing chassis uh, to begin with. So that should be awesome. 
Um, any other comments? Super related or otherwise? Nope. All right. Viewer question. This is from the Sean, and I will <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, and Rob, a uh, Robinson is a frequent visitor of Twitter. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> and uh, I'll just get to the Sean's question. <laughs> I just watched your Driver's Choice Awards show, and I've got a question: Why no mid-size pickup truck award? You break down cars and SUVs, but not pickups. So Tacoma Ranger Gladiator Colorado Canyon Frontier, which is it? Uh, who wants to go first on this one? Um, I mean, right off the bat, looking at the list of cars that the Sean gave us, I would just, you know, off the off my heels say Tacoma. But um, you know, driven the Ranger, driven the Gladiator, older Colorados, a um, little bit of time behind a Canyon, uh, behind the wheel of a Canyon, and no driving experience in the Frontier. But um, I mean, I don't know why we don't have that segment in our awards. Well, for many years, I'll answer that, and then I'll get to the Sean's question. But uh, for many years, there was nothing there. I mean, the Ranger uh, was gone, and the only thing was Tacoma and Frontier were the only two, mm -hmm. and they weren't really they updated. They were in a battle to see who could stay the same the longest. Yeah, though. they weren't really <laughs> up. So there was really no action there. So um, there just was no reason for the category. But within the last couple of years, there's been a lot of action in there. It certainly could be uh, added back in. This year would have been a good year because uh, we had a new Ranger and a new Gladiator. Uh, my choice between those two, though, would be a very difficult one. I don't know what you guys feel. Between um, Ranger and Gladiator. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're both they're almost totally different vehicles. I mean, the Gladiator is a great vehicle, not particularly a great truck. Ranger is a great truck, not particularly a great vehicle you want to drive every day. So uh, it would be tough. Well, there's oh, a yeah. conspicuous um, lack of Honda in here with the Ridgeline, which. Yeah, so I didn't want to bring that up because, you know, full disclosure, well, there is a Ridgeline in my household. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it won a, the shootout we did with Cars.com, and I think that as much as people like to ignore it and pretend it's not a truck, it is a mid-sized pickup truck and a pretty darn good one. I mean, it's not like we just felt we wanted to give it to Honda because it's a Honda. I mean, it it goes through the same test that we give all other trucks, and it won. I mean, yeah. it's just a, it's a nice truck. What do you think, Stephanie? Which one would... Uh would be your pick. Tacoma. Tacoma? Yeah. See, I, uh, <laughs> I don't like the Tacoma It's that a much. tough truck for sure, and it's uh, looking at the do a lot with list, it. What else do I even like on that list? That's the difficult part. Because well, like I you mean, said, the Gladiator's not exactly a truck. There's a fair amount of right. diversity now, I feel like. So I understand why there's a, a want for a category. Because, you know, they each do something quite differently now. Colorado and Canyon are more upscale. They're pretty big. Tacoma's still, well, Tacoma's just what it always was, mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit more expensive. And uh, <laughs> the Gladiator, I think, just has a, has a cool factor to it. But like Robinson said, it's not that great of a truck if you're just looking at, at it from a truck standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and getting back to the awards, the problem, another problem is to be, el the, you know, to be eligible for the award, the, re the way we pick them is all new vehicles for that year. So we may add it next year, but I'm not sure there'll be anything new to even be in the category next year. So it may show up in our awards, may not. That's a great question, though. The Sean, stay tuned. Uh, does anyone have? We'll let you know next year. Yeah, <laughs> you can <laughs> tweet at us in yeah, exactly sure. 365 you know? days. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, Randa Rave, anybody have one? Oh yeah. Greg's, Greg's okay. Edge of his seat. Settle down. I'm always Settle ready down. for a rant. <clears throat> now, this one just happened to me today. Gas station Phillips. Mm -hmm. I cannot stand when I just want to get out and I want to fill my car with gas. And it's like, do you have a rewards card? Uh, yeah. Do you want a car wash? Oh, Would you so like a receipt? Yeah. And it's I like, agree. good Lord. Exactly. Man. Especially that's like, when it's cold when out. When it's like 10 degrees out. Yeah. you got to right pull through all this stuff. It's Beyond ridiculous. that, yeah. I'm just, I'm a very important person. And I just, my time <laughs> is extremely valuable. Oh, <laughs> so I. a busy guy. Yeah. I can't be sitting there and saying no to every single. Cause, and I swear they're trying to trick you into a car wash. Yeah. Because they'll switch sure. up like it. Sometimes it'll be receipt first and then car wash. And if you want a receipt and you're at a, a pump that asks a car wash first, like immediately you hit yes because yeah, yeah. you're thinking receipt. But and nope. You spent 15 you bucks you didn't want to spend. Is exactly. this a debit card or is yeah. this a credit there, card? Yeah, there's yeah. another <laughs> question. Yeah. Just let me. There's got to be like uh, some sort of option. There's just like a no fuss option to just yeah. get to my, my uh, grade selection. 
uh, actually just uh, earlier this week, I saw at a gas station, probably the same one that you were at, because <laughs> I know exactly what you're going through. Someone had taped uh, the back of their receipt up there and said, no expletive car wash. <laughs> he just taped it on the gas pump. Wow. So he may have gotten tricked into buying one and wasn't too happy about it. I got to yeah. find that person. Yeah. We could probably sit down and have a beer together. <laughs> he would be a much more interesting rave or rant than <laughs> <Rave>. that was. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's what he's into. Any so. other comments? So kind of actually oh. just to come up on the tail end of what Greg was saying, I had an experience today as well where I was on the way to the track and the car was dirty, so I had to get a car wash, but it didn't need gas. And one of the things I'm running into, because we take these cars out to film them all the time and they consistently get dirty, I go through a lot of car washes with our test vehicles. And these gas stations need to make sure that their credit card systems and stuff are working when you're trying to get to just have a car wash. There was a guy in a truck in front of me and I timed it because I saw he was having some issues with the machine. And for 12 minutes, this guy sat there turning his card upside down every which way, <laughs> trying to put it in the machine. Nothing's happening. He's smacking it on, like you would an old tube TV with rabbit ears trying to get the darn thing to work. I'm laughing my butt off sitting in my car just waiting for this guy to do it. And he eventually just gets frustrated and drives straight through the car wash and leaves. And I went up and tried to use it as well, thinking that I might be smarter than that gentleman. And the machine just wasn't working. The card reader was broken. And I didn't go in and tell anybody because it was a car wash across the street. So sorry, whoever, but the Shell station got my business and you didn't. And... Um, yeah, just make sure your stuff is working because this is supposed to be convenient. It's supposed to be in and out and like, you know, like, like Greg, a lot of people are busy. A lot of people are important. They got stuff to do and they don't have a lot of extra time on their hands. A lot of people so, think they're important. Th yes, this is true. This is true. <laughs> so just keep the maintenance on the darn card readers up and just make sure that people can get into your card wa car wash, especially if you're going to be selling and pushing it so hard and making Greg stand out in the cold and press a button 20 <laughs> times just to then hit the button for regular gas. Amen. Yeah, to Stephanie's point, definitely in the cold. I mean, it's almost like a yeah, safety mm -hmm. issue, yeah. making people stand there for literally a minute mm -hmm. trying to just to get, pump some gas. Maybe New Jersey has it right. They all have uh, New Jersey and yeah. Oregon. Full service. Oh, okay. yeah. Oregon's the same way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yep. Side note, watching my friend in college from New Jersey trying to pump gas for the first time up in Vermont <laughs> was hilarious. Oh my God. Sounds like a great place to wrap it up. Uh, okay. We'll uh, thank our audio engineer, Jillian Cookman, our podcast producer, Greg Carlos, and of course, our podcast creator and creator of all things awesome, Motor Week related, uh, Bob Mixter. Uh, be sure to tune in all the usual places. Check us out on the internets. And uh, thanks for watching Motor Week. You've been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and RockAuto.com. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at MotorWeek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.